Scenes 13 to 19 of Faust. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Faust, Part 1, by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Translated by Bayard Taylor. Scene 13. A Garden Arbor. Margaret comes in, conceals herself behind the door, puts her finger to her lips and peeps through the crack. He comes. Faust, entering. Ah, rogue, a tease thou art. I have thee. He kisses her. Margaret, clasping him and returning the kiss. Dearest man, I love thee from my heart. Mephistopheles knocks. Faust, stamping his foot. Who's there? A friend. A beast. It is time to separate. Marta, coming. Yes, sir, tis late. May I not then upon you wait? My mother would farewell. Ah, can I not remain? Farewell. Adieu. And soon to meet again. Exeunt Faust and Mephistopheles. Dear God, however is it such a man can think and know so much? I stand ashamed and in amaze, and answer yes to all he says. A poor unknowing child, and he, I can't think what he finds in me. Exit. Scene 14. Forest and Cavern. Faust, Solus. Spirit sublime, thou gavest me, gavest me all for which I prayed. Not unto me in vain hast thou thy countenance revealed in fire. Thou gavest me nature as a kingdom grand, with power to feel and to enjoy it. Thou not only cold, amazed acquaintance yieldst, but grantest that in her profoundest breast I gaze as in the bosom of a friend. The ranks of living creatures thou dost lead before me, teaching me to know my brothers in air and water and the silent wood. And when the storm in forests roars and grinds, the giant firs in falling, neighbor boughs and neighbor trunks with crushing weight bear down, and falling fill the hills with hollow thunders, then to the cave secure thou leadest me. Then showest me mine own self, and in my breast the deep mysterious miracles unfold. And when the perfect moon before my gaze comes up with soothing light, around me float from every precipice and thicket damp the silvery phantoms of the ages past, and temper the austere delight of thought. That nothing can be perfect unto man, I now am conscious. With this ecstasy, which brings me near and nearer to the gods, Thou gavest the comrade whom I now no more can do without, though cold and scornful he demeans me to myself, and with a breath, a word, transforms thy gifts to nothingness. Within my breast he fans a lawless fire, unwearied for that fair and lovely form. Thus in desire I hasten to enjoyment, and in enjoyment pine to feel desire. Mephistopheles enters. Have you not led this life quite long enough? How can a farther test delight you? It is very well that once one tries the stuff, but something new must then require to you. Would there were other work for thee? To plague my day auspicious thou returnest. Well... I'll engage to let thee be. Thou darest not tell me so in earnest. The loss of thee were truly very slight. Comrade crazy, rude, repelling. One has one's hands full all day and night. If what one does or leaves undone is right. From such a face as thine there is no telling. There is again thy proper tone. That thou hast bored me I must thankful be. Poor son of art, how could thou thus alone have led thy life bereft of me? I, for a time at least, have worked thy cure. Thy fancy's rickets plague thee not at all. 
had I not been so hadst thou sure walked thyself off this earthly ball. Why here to caverns, rocky hollows slinking, seest thou as it were an owl a blinking? Why suckst from sodden moss and dripping stone, toad like thy nourishment alone? A fine way this thy time to fill. The doctor is in thy body still. What fresh and vital forces canst thou guess spring from my commerce with the wilderness? But if thou hadst the power of guessing, thou wouldst be devil enough to grudge my soul the blessing. A blessing drawn from supernatural fountains, in night and dew to lie upon the mountains. All heaven and art in rapture penetrating, thyself to godhood hoftily inflating, to grub with yearning force through art's dark marrow, compress the six days' work within thy bosom narrow to taste i know not what in hofty power thine own ecstatic life on things shower thine earthly self behind thee cast and then the lofty instinct does with a gesture at last i dare not say how to pluck the final flower shame on thee yes thou findest that unpleasant thou hast the moral right to cry me shame at present one dares not that before chest years declare, Which chest heart, notwithstanding, cannot spare. And once for all I grudge thee not the pleasure Of lying to thyself in moderate measure. But such a course thou wilt not long endure, Already art thou o'er-excited, And if it last, wilt soon be plighted To madness and to horror sure. Enough of that, thy love sits lonely yonder by all things sudden and oppressed her thoughts and yearnings seek thee tender or fonder my love is in her breast first came thy passion's flood and poured around her as when from melted snow a streamlet overflows thou hast a dear it so filled and drowned her that now thy stream all shallow shows Methinks, instead of in the forest's lording, The noble sir should find it good, The love of this young silly blood At once to set about rewarding. Her time is miserably long, See haunts her window, watching clouds that stray Over the old city wall and far away. Where I a little bird, so runs her song, Day long and half night long, now she is lively, mostly sad, now wept beyond her tears, then again quiet she appears, always love mad. Serpent! Serpent! Mephistopheles aside. Ha! Do I trap thee? Get thee away with thine offences, reprobate. Name not that fairest thing nor the desire for her sweet body bring again before my half-distracted senses. What wouldst thou, then? She thinks that thou art flown, and half and half thou art, I own. Yet am I near, and love keeps watch and ward. Though I were ne'er so far, it cannot falter. I envy even the body of the Lord, the touching of her lips before the altar. It is very well, my envy oft reposes On your twin pair that feed among the roses. Away, thou pimp! You rail, and it is fun to me. The god who fashioned youth and maid Perceived the novelest purpose of his trait, And also met dear opportunity. Go on, it is you profound. It is for your sweetheart's room you are bound, And not for that, indeed. What are within her arms the heavenly blisses? Though I be glowing with her kisses, Do I not always share her need? I am the fugitive, all houseless roaming, The monster without air or rest, That like a cataract, down rocks and gorges foaming, Leaps maddened into the abyss's breast, And sideward she, with young unwakened senses, within her cabin on the alpine field, her simple homely life commences, her little world therein concealed. And I, 
God's hate flung o'er me, had not enough to thrust the stubborn rocks before me and strike them into dust. She in her peace I yet must undermine. Thou, hell, hast claimed this sacrifice as thine. Help, devil, through the coming pangs to push me. What must be, let it quickly be. Let fall on me her fate, and also crush me. One ruin whelm both her and me. Again it seeds, again it glows. Thou fool, go in and comfort her. When such a head as thine no outlet knows, it thinks the end must soon occur. Hail him who keeps a steadfast mind. Thou else dost well the devil nature wear. Not so insipid in the world I find, as is a devil in despair. Scene 15. Margaret's Room. Margaret at the spinning wheel, alone. My peace is gone. My heart is sore. I never shall find it. Ah, never more, save I have him near. The grave is here, the world is gall and bitterness all. My poor weak head is racked and crazed, my thought is lost, my sense is mazed. My peace is gone, my heart is sore, I never shall find it, ah, never more. To see him, him only, at the pain I sit, to meet him, him only, the house I quit. His lofty gait, his noble size, the smile of his mouth, the power of his eyes, and the magic flow of his talk, the bliss in the clasp of his hand, and, ah, his kiss. My peace is gone, my heart is sore, I never shall find it, ah, never more. My bosom yearns for him alone, ah, dared I clasp him, and hold, and own, and kiss his mouth to heart's desire, and on his kisses at last expire. Scene 16. Martyr's Garden. Margaret. Promise me, Henry. Faust. What I can. How is't with thy religion, pray? Thou art a dear, good-hearted man, and yet I think dost not incline that way. Leave that, my child. Thou know'st my love is tender, for love my blood and life would I surrender. And as for faith and church, I grant to each his own. That's not enough. We must believe thereon. Must we? Would that I had some influence. Then, too, thou honourest not the holy sacraments. I honour them. Desiring no possession. Tis long since thou hast been to mass or to confession. Believest thou in God? My darling, who shall dare, I believe in God, to say? Ask priest or sage the answer to declare, and it will seem a mocking play, a sarcasm on the asker. Then thou believest not? Hear me not falsely, sweetest countenance. Who dare express him, and who profess him, saying, I believe in him? Who, feeling, seeing, deny his being, saying, I believe him not? The all enfolding, the all upholding, folds and upholds he not thee, me, himself? Arches not there the sky above us? Lies not beneath us firm the earth? And rise not on us shining, friendly, the everlasting stars? Look I not eye to eye on thee, and feels not thronging to head and heart the force still weaving its eternal secret, invisible, visible, round thy life? Vast as it is, fill with that force thy heart, and when thou in the feeling wholly blessed art, call it then what thou wilt, call it bliss, heart, love, God, I have no name to give it. Feeling is all in all, the name is sound and smoke, obscuring heaven's clear glow. All that is fine and good, to hear it so, much the same way the preacher spoke, only with slightly different phrases. The same thing in all places, all hearts that beat beneath the heavenly day, each in its language say, Why then not I in mine as well? To hear it thus it may seem passable, 
and yet some hitch in there must be for thou hast no christianity dear love i've long been grieved to see that thou art in such company how so the man who with thee goes thy mate within my deepest innermost soul i hate in all my life there's nothing has given my heart so keen a pang of loathing as his repulsive face has done nay fear him not my sweetest one i feel his presence like something ill i've else for all a kindly will but much as my heart to see thee yearneth the secret horror of him returneth and i think the man a knave as i live if i do him wrong may god forgive there must be such queer birds however live with the like of him may i never when once inside the door comes he he looks around so sneeringly and half in wrath one sees that in nothing no interest he hath tis written on his forehead that love to him is a thing abhorred i am so happy on thine arm so free so yielding and so warm and in his presence stifled seems my heart foreboding angel that thou art it overcomes me in such degree that wheresoever he meets us even i feel as though i'd lost my love for thee when he is by i could not pray to heaven that burns within me like a flame and surely henry tis with thee the same there now is thine antipathy but i must go ah shall there never be a quiet hour to see us fondly plighted with breast to breast and soul to soul united ah if i only slept alone i'd draw the bolts to-night for thy desire but my mother's sleep so light has grown and if we were discovered by her twould be my death upon the spot thou angel fear it not here is a vial in her drink but three drops of it measure and deepest sleep will on her senses sink what would i not to give thee pleasure it will not harm her when one tries it if it would my love would i advise it ah dearest man if but thy face i see i know not what compels me to thy will so much have i already done for thee that scarcely more is left me to fulfil enter mephistopheles exit margaret mephistopheles the monkey is she gone hast played the spy again i have heard how fully she drew thee the doctor has been capsized it is plain great good i hope the thing will do thee the girls have much desire to ascertain if one is prim and good as ancient rules compel if there he is led they think he will follow them as well thou monster wilt nor see nor own how this pure soul of faith so lowly so loving and ineffable the faith alone that her salvation is with scruples holy pines lest she hold as lost the man she loves so well thou full of sensual super sensual desire a girl by the nose is leading thee abortion thou of filth and fire and then how masterly she reads physiognomy when i'm present she is impressed she knows not how she in my mask a hidden sense would read she feels that surely i'm a genius now perhaps the very devil indeed well well to-night what's that to thee yet my delight it will also be scene seventeen at the fountain margaret and lisbeth with pitchers lisbeth has nothing heard of barbara margaret no not a word i go so little out it's true sibylla said to-day she's played the fool at last there's not a doubt such taking on of airs how so it stinks she's feeding too whene'er she eats and drinks ah and so at last it serves her rightly she clung to the fellow so long and tightly that was a promenading at village and dance parading as the first they must everywhere shine and he treated her always to pies and wine and she made it to do with her face so fine so mean and shameless was her behaviour she took all the presents the fellow gave her twas kissing and coddling on and on so now at the end the flower is gone the poor poor thing dost pity her at that when one of us at spinning sat and mother nights ne'er let us out the door she sported with her paramour 
on the door bench in the passage dark the length of the time they'd never mark so now her head no more shall lift but do church penance in her sinner shift he'll surely take her for his wife he'd be a fool a brisk young blade has room elsewhere to ply his trade besides he's gone that is not fair if him she gets why let her beware the boy shall dash her wreath on the floor and will scatter shaft before her door exit margaret returning home how scornfully i once reviled when some poor maiden was beguiled more speech than any tongue suffices i crave to censure others vices black as it seemed i blackened still and blacker yet was in my will and blessed myself and boasted high and now a living sin am i yet all that drove my heart thereto god was so good so dear so true scene eighteen don john in a niche of the wall a shrine with an image of the martyr dolorosa pots of flowers before it margaret putting fresh flowers in the pots incline o maiden thou sorrow laden thy gracious countenance upon my pain the sword thy heart in with anguish smarting thou lookest up to where thy son is slain thou seest the father thy sad sighs gather and bear aloft thy sorrow and his pain ah past guessing beyond expressing the pangs that wring my flesh and bone why this anxious heart so burneth why it trembleth why it yearneth knowest thou and thou alone where'er i go what sorrow what woe what woe and sorrow within my bosom aches alone and ah unsleeping i'm weeping 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 the heart within me breaks the pots before my window alas my tears did wet as in the early morning for thee these flowers i set within my lonely chamber the morning sun shone red i sat in utter sorrow already on my bed help rescue me from death and stain o maiden thou sorrow laden incline thy countenance upon my pain scene nineteen night street before margaret's door valentine a soldier margaret's brother when i have sat at some carouse where each to each his brag allows and many a comrade prays to me the pink of girls ride lustily with brimming glass that spilled the toast and elbows planted as in boast i sat in unconcerned repose and heard the swagger as it rose and stroking then my beard i'd say smiling the bumper in my hand each well enough in her own way but is there one in all the land like sister margaret good as gold one that to her can a candle hold cling clang here's to her went around the board he speaks the truth cried some in her the flower of the sex is found and all the swaggerers were dumb and now i could tear my hair with vexation and dash all my brains in desperation with turned up nose each scamp may face me with sneers and stinging taunts disgrace me and like a bankrupt debtor setting a chance dropped word may set me sweating yet though i thrash them all together i cannot call them liars either but what comes sneaking there to view if i mistake not there are two if he's one let me at him dry he shall not leave this spot alive how from the window of the sacristy upward the eternal lamp sends forth a glimmer that lessening sidewards fainter grows and dimmer till darkness closes from the sky the shadows thus within my bosom gather i'm like a sentimental tomcat rather that round the tall fire ladder sweeps and still thee then along the copping creeps quite virtuous we tall i come a little tevious and a little frolicsome i feel in every limb the presage forerunning the grain to all pauses night day after to-morrow brings its message and one keeps watch then with delight meanwhile may not the treasure risen be which there behind i glimmering see shall soon experience the pleasure to lift the cattle with its treasure 
I lately gave therein a squint, saw splendid lion dollars in it. Not even a jewel, not a ring to deck therewith, my darling girl? I saw among the rest a thing that seemed to be a chain of pearl. That's well indeed, for painful is it to bring no gift when her I visit. Thou shouldst not find it so annoying, would not return to be enjoying. Now, while the sky leads forth its starry throng, thou wilt hear a masterpiece, no work completer. I will sing her, first a moral song, the sure afterwards to cheat her. Sings to the Scyther. What dost thou hear in daybreak clear, Katrina dear, before thy lover's door? Beware the blame. Let's in a mate, that's how the mate, the butted never more. The quaxing shun of such an one, when one said is done, Good night to thee, poor thing. Love's time is brief, unto no thief, be warm and leave, but with the wedding ring. Valentine comes forward. Whom wilt thou lure? God's element! Rat-catching piper thou! Perdition! To the devil first the instrument! To the devil then the cursed musician! The cedar is smashed. For nothing more it is fading. There's yet a skull I must be splitting. To Faust. Sir doctor, don't retreat, I pray. Stand by, I'll lead, if you will but tarry. Out with your speed without delay. You have but to lunge, and I will parry. Then parry that! Why not? It is light. That too! Of course! I think the devil must fight. How is it then? My hand's already lame. To Faust. Trust home. Jails. Oh, God! Now is the lover tame. But come away, it is time for us to fly. For there arises now a murderous cry. With the police it were easy to compound it. But here the penal code will sift and sound it. Exit with Faust. Martha at the window. Come out, come out. Margaret at the window. Quick, bring a light. Martha as above. They swear and storm, they yell and fight. Here lies one dead already, see. Martha coming from the house. The murderers! Whither have they run? Margaret coming out. Who lies here? Tis, Tis thy mother's son. Almighty God, what misery! I'm dying. That is quickly said. And quicker yet tis done. Why howl, you woman, there? Instead, come here and listen, every one. All gather round him. Why, Margaret, see, still young thou art, but not the least bit shrewd or smart, thy business thus too slight. So this advice I bid thee heed, now that thou art a whore indeed. Why, be one then, I'll write. My brother, God, such words to me. In this game let our Lord God be. What's done's already done, alas. What follows it must come to pass, with one begin'st thou secretly. Then soon will others come to thee, and when a dozen thee have known, thou art also free to all the town. When shame is born and first appears, she is in secret brought to light, and then they draw the veil of night over her head and ears. Her life, in fact, they're loath to spare her, but let her growth and strength display, she walks abroad unveiled by day, yet is not grown a whit the fairer. The uglier she is to sight, the more she seeks the day's broad light. The time I verily can discern when all the honest folk will turn from thee, thou jade, and seek protection as from a corpse that breeds infection. Thy guilty heart shall then dismay thee when they but look thee in the face. Shalt not in a golden chain array thee, nor at the altar take thy place. Shalt not, in lace and ribbons flowing, make merry when the dance is going. But in some corner will betide thee, among the beggars and cripples hide thee. And so... Though even God forgive, on earth a damned existence live.
Commend your soul to God for pardon, That's you your heart with slander harden. Thou pimp most infamous be still, Could I thy withered body kill, T'would bring for all my sinful pleasure Forgiveness in the richest measure. My brother, this is hell's own pain. I tell thee, from thy tears refrain, when thou from honour didst depart, it stabbed me to the very heart. Now, through the slumber of the grave, I go to God as a soldier brave. Dies. End of scene 19. End of section. Twenty and twenty one of Faust. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Faust, Part One, by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Translated by Bayard Taylor. Scene twenty. Cathedral. Service, organ, and anthem. Margaret among much people. The evil spirit behind Margaret. How otherwise was it, Margaret, when thou, still innocent, here to the altar camest, and from the worn and fingered book thy prayers didst prattle, half sport of childhood, half God within thee? Margaret, where tends thy thought? Within thy bosom what hidden crime? Prayst thou for mercy on thy mother's soul, that fell asleep to long, long torment, and through thee? Upon thy threshold who's the blood, And stirreth not and quicken Something beneath thy heart, Thy life disquieting With most foreboding presence. Woe, woe, would I were free From the thoughts that cross me, Drawing hither and thither despite me. Dies ire, dies ila, Sovet seclum in favila, Sound of the organ. Wrath takes thee, the trumpet peals, the graves tremble, and thy heart from ashy rest to fiery torments now again requickened throbs to life. Would I were forth, I feel as if the organ here my breath takes from me, my very heart dissolved by the anthem. You I cannot breathe. The massy pillars imprison me. The vaulted arches crush me. Air. Hide thyself. Sin and shame stay never hidden. Air, light, woe to thee. They turn their faces, the glorified, from thee, the pure their hands to offer, shuddering, refuse thee. Woe! Quid sum miser tun dicturus? Neighbor, your cordial. She falls in a swoon. Scene 21 Valpurgis Night The Hart's Mountains District of Shirka and Aland Dost thou not wish a broomstick steed's assistance? The stardiest he goat I would gladly see. The way we take, our goal is yet some distance. So long as in my legs I feel the fresh existence, this knotted staff suffices me. What need to shorten so the way? Along this labyrinth of vales to wander, Then climb the rocky ramparts yonder, Where from the fountain flings eternal spray, Is such delight my steps would fain delay. The springtime stirs within the fragrant birches, And even the fir-tree feels it now. Should then our limbs escape its gentle searches? I notice no such thing, I vow. It is winter steel within my body. Upon my path I wish for frost and snow. How sadly rises, incomplete and ruddy, The moon's lone disk, with its belated glow, And lights so dimly, 
that as one advances, at every step one strikes a rock or tree. Let us then use a jack o' lantern's glances. I see one yonder, burning merrily. Oh dear, my friend, I will levy thine attendance. Why waste so vainly thy resplendence? Be kind enough to light us up the steep. Will o' the wisp. My reverence, I hope, will be enabled to curb my temperament unstable, for zigzag courses we are wont to keep. Indeed, he would like mankind to imitate. Now in the devil's name go straight, or I'll blow out his being's flickering spark. You are the master of the house, I mark, and I shall try to serve you nicely. But then reflect, the mountain's magic mad to-day, and if a will-o'-the-wisp must guide you on the way, you mustn't take things too precisely. In alternating song. We, it seems, have entered newly in the sphere of dreams enchanted. Do the bidding guide us truly, that our feet be for us planted in the vast days of spaces. See them swiftly changing places, trees on trees beside us trooping, and the crags above us stooping, and the rocky snouts outgrowing, hear them snoring, hear them blowing. O'er the stones the grasses flowing, stream and stream, let seek the hollow, hear I noises, songs that follow, hear I tender love petitions. Voices of those heavenly visions, sounds of hope of love and like, and the echoes like traditions of all this come faint and hollow. Who shoo nearer hover, jay and screech owl and the plover? Are they all awake and crying? Is the salamander pushes? Loaded belly through the bushes, and the roots like serpents twisted through the sand, and boulders toiling, brightest, weirdest links uncoiling to entrap us unresisted. Living knots and gnarls uncanny, fill with polypus and tenny for the wanderer mice are flying, thousand colored herd wise hying through the moss and through the heather and the fireflies wink and darkle crowded swarms that soar and sparkle and in weltering as god gather tell me if we still are standing or if further we're ascending all is turning whirling blending trees and rocks with grinning faces wandering lights that spin in mazes still increasing and expanding grasp my scarred with heart undaunted here a middle peak is planted, whence one see to it a maze, mammon in the mountain blaze. How strangely glimmers through the hollows a dreary light like that of dawn! Its exhalation tracks and follows the deepest gorges faint and wan. Here steam, there rolling vapour sweepeth, here burns the glow through film and haze now like a tender thread it creepeth now like a fountain leaps and plays here winds away and in a hundred divided veins the valley braids there in a corner pressed and sundered itself detaches spreads and fades here gush the sparkles incandescent like scattered showers of golden sand but see in all their height at present the rocky ramparts blazing stand has not some mammon grandly lighted his palace for this festal night? It is lucky thou hast seen the sight, the boisterous guests approach that were invited. How raves the tempest through the air, with what fierce blows upon my neck tis beating! Under the old reefs of the rock retreating, hold fast, lest thou be hurled down the abysses there. The night with the mist is black. Hark how the forests grind and crack, Hearken the pillars are shattered, The evergreen palace is shaking, Boughs are groaning and breaking, The tree trunks terribly thunder, The roots are twisting asunder, In frightfully intricate crashing, 
each on the other is dashing, and over the extreme gorges the tempest whistles and surges. Here's the dull voices high ringing, far away or nearer singing. Yes, the mountain side along sweeps an infuriate clamoring song. Witches in chorus. The witches ride the rope at Easter. The stubble is yellow and green the crop. Their gallon is the crowd for carnivals, where we are in seats over all. And so they go over stone and stop the witches and the butt. Voice one. Alone, old Babau is coming now. She rides upon a pharaoh sow. Witches chorus. Then honor to whom the honor is due. They bow first to lead the crew. A tuffle sow and the mother thereon. Then follow the witches, every one. Which way comest thou hither? Voice two. O'er the Ilsen stone. I peeped at the owl in her nest alone, how she stared and glared. Betake thee to hell. Why so fast and so fell? She has scored and has flayed me. See the wounds she has made me. Witches chorus. The way is wide, the way is long. long. See, what a, what a wild, wild and crazy throng. Crazy throng. The, the ruin stretches, the fork it thrusts, the child is stifled, the mother bursts. Wizards semi-chorus. As doth the snail in shell we crawl, Before us go the women all. When towards the devil's house we tread, Woman's a thousand steps ahead. We do not measure with such care, Woman in a thousand steps is theft. But howsoe'er she hasten may, Man in one leap has cleared the way. Voice one from above. Come on, come on, from rocky lake. Voice two from below. Aloft, we'd fain ourselves betake. We've washed and are as bright as ever you will, yet we're eternally sterile still. Both choruses, witches and wizards. The, the wind, wind is hushed, is hushed the stars shoot by, by, the, the dreary, dreary moon forsakes, forsakes the sky. The, the magic notes, notes like spark, spark on spark, drizzle whistling, whistling through, through the, the dark. Voice two from below. Halt there, who there? Voice one from above. Who calls from the rocky cleft below there? Voice two from below. Take me too, take me too. I'm climbing now three hundred years, and yet the summit cannot see among my equals I would be. Both choruses, witches and wizards. Bears, bears the broom and bears the, bears the sock, bears the fork and bears, bears the buck. Who cannot raise himself tonight is evermore a ruined white. Half witch below. So long I stumble ill bestead, and the others are now so far ahead. At home I've neither rest nor cheer, and yet I cannot gain them here. To cheer the witch will sound a veil, a rag will answer for a sail. Each child whose ship ship supplies, he ne'er will fly, who now not flies. Both choruses, witches and wizards. When round the summit rolls up light, then lower and on the ground alight, and far and wide the ever press, with which would swarms of wantonness. They settle down. They crowd and push, they roar and clatter, they whirl and whistle, pull and chatter, they shine and spit and stink and burn, that through each element we learn. Keep close, or we are parted in our turn. Where art thou? In the distance. Here. What? Well, so far astray. Then how's right I must use and clear the way? Make room, square volant comes. Room, gentle rebel, room. Here, doctor, hold to me. In one jump we'll resume, and in your space and from the crowd be free. It is too much even for the like of me. Yonder, with special light, there is something shining clearer. Within those bushes I have a mind to see. Come on, we'll slip a little nearer. Spirit of contradiction, on, I'll follow straight. Tis planned most wisely, if I judge aright. We climb the Brocken's top in the Valpurgis night, That arbitrarily here ourselves we isolate. But see what motley flames among the header. There is a lively club together. In smaller circles one is not alone. Better the summit I must own. There fire and whirling smoke I see. They seek the evil one in wild confusion. Many enigmas there might find solution. But their enigmas also not at be. Leave to the multitude their riot. Here will we house ourselves in quiet. It is an old transmitted trade that in the greater world the little walls are made. 
I see stark nude young witches congregate, the old ones veiled and hidden shrewdly. On my account be kind, nor treat them rudely. The trouble is small, the fun is great. I hear the noise of instruments attuning, while the in yet one must learn to bear the croning. Come, come along, it must be, I declare. I'll go ahead and introduce thee there, thine obligation newly earning. That is no little space, what sayest thou, friend? Look yonder, thou canst scarcely see the end. A hundred fires along the ranks are burning. They dance, they chat, they cook, they drink, they court. Nowhere, just tell me, is there better sport? Wilt thou, to introduce us to the revel, assume the part of wizard or of devil? I am mostly used, it is true, to go incognito. But on a gala day one may his order show. The garter does not deck my suit, but honoured at at home is here the cloven foot. Perceives thou yonder snail? It cometh slow and steady so delicately its feelers pry that it hath scented me already i cannot here disguise me if i try but come we will go from this fire to a newer i am the go-between and thou the wooer to some who are sitting around dying embers all oh, gentlemen why at the outskirts enter i'd praise you if i found you snuggly in the centre with youth and revel round you like a jewel, you each at home are quite enough alone. General, say who would put his trust in nations? However, for them one may have worked and planned. For with the people, as with women, youth always has the upper hand. Minister, then now too far from what is just and sage, I praise the old ones not unduly. When we were all in all, then truly, then was the real golden age. Parvenu. We also were not stupid either, and what we should not often did. But now all things have from their bases slid, just as we meant to hold them fast together. Author. Who now? A work of moderate sense will read. Such works are held as antiquate and mossy. And as regards the younger folk, indeed, they never yet have been so pert and saucy. Mephistopheles, who all at once appears very old. I feel that men are ripe for judgment day. Now for the last time I have the witch's hill ascended, since to the lease my cask is drained away. The walls as well must soon be ended. Huxter witch. Ye gentlemen, don't pass me thus. Let not the chance neglected be. Behold my wares attentively. The stock is rare and various. And yet there's nothing I've collected, no shop on earth like this you'll find, which has not once sore hurt inflicted upon the world and on mankind. No daggers here that set not blood to flowing, no cup that hath not once within a healthy frame poured speedy death in poison glowing. No gems that have not brought a maid to shame, no sword but severed ties for the unwary, or from behind struck down the adversary. Gossip, the times thou badly comprehendest. What is done has happed, what haps is done. It were better if for novelties thou sendest. By such alone can we be won. Let me not lose myself in all this pother. This is a fair as never was another. The whirlpool swirls above. Thou art shoved thyself. Amazing to show. But who is that? Not her especially. It is Lilith. Who? Adam's first wife is she. Beware the lure within her lovely tresses. The splendid soul adornment of her hair. When she succeeds therewith a youth to snare. Not soon again she frees him from her chesses those two the old one with the young one sitting they've danced already more than fitting no rest to-night for young or old they start another dance come now let us take hold faust dancing with the young witch a lovely dream once came to me i then beheld an apple tree and there two fairest apples shone they lured me so i climbed thereon 
huckster witch. Apples have been desired by you since first in paradise they grew, and I am moved with joy to know that such within my garden grow. Dancing with the old one. A dissolute dream once came to me, therein I saw a cloven tree, which had a... Yet as it was, I fancied a... Old witch. I offer here my best salute unto the knight with a cloven foot. Let him uh, prepare if him does not scare. Procto phantasmist. Accursed folk, how dare you venture thus? Had you not, long since, demonstration that ghosts can't stand on ordinary foundation? And now you even dance like one of us. Huckster witch, dancing. Why does he come then to our ball? Dancing. Oh, everywhere on him you fall. When others dance, he weighs the matter. If he can't every step be chatter, then tis the same as were the step not made. But if you forwards go, his ire is most displayed, and you would whirl in regular gyration as he does in his dull old mill. He'd show at any rate good will, especially if you heard and heeded his hortation. You still are here? Nay, tis a thing unheard. Vanish at once. We've said the enlightened word. The pack of devils by no rules is daunted. We are so wise, and yet is Tegel haunted. To clear the folly out, now have I swept and stirred. Twill ne'er be clean, why, tis a thing unheard. Then cease to bore us at our ball. I tell you, spirits, to your face, I give to spirit despotism no place. My spirit cannot practice it at all. The dance continues. Not will succeed, I see amid such revels, yet something from a tour I always save, and hope, before my last step to the grave, to overcome the poets and the devils. He now will sit him in the nearest puddle, the solstice whereof he is most assured, and when upon his rump the liches hang and fuddle, he will be spirits and of spirit cured. To Faust, who has left the dance. Wherefore forsakest thou the lovely maiden, that in the dance so sweetly sang? Ah, in the midst of it there sprang a red mouse from her mouth, sufficient reason. That is nothing. One must not so squim as be, so the mouse was not grey enough for thee. Who think of that in love's selected season? Then saw I... What? Mephisto, seest thou there, alone and far, a girl most pale and fair. She falters on, her way scarce knowing, as if with fettered feet that stay her going. I must confess it seems to me as if my kindly Margaret were she. Let the thing be. All thence have evil drawn. It is a magic shape, a lifeless eidolon. Such the encounter is not good. Their blank set stare benumbs the human blood. And one is almost turned to stone. Medusa's tale to thee is known. Forsooth the eyes they are of one whom, dying, No hand with loving pressure closed. That is the breast whereon I once was lying, The body sweet beside which I reposed. It is magic all, thou fool seduced so easily unto each man his love she seems to be the woe the rapture so ensnare me that from her gaze i cannot tear me and strange around her fairest throat a single scarlet band is gleaming no broader than a knife-blade seeming quite right the mark i also note her head beneath her arm she will sometimes carry it as perseus lopped it her old adversary the crevice to the same illusion steel. Come, let us mount this little hill. The prater shows no livelier steer, and if they have not bewitched my sense, I verily say a theatre. What's going on? Servibilis. It will shortly recommence. A new performance. Tis the last of seven. To give that number is the custom here. Twas by a dilettante written and dilettanti in the parts appear that now i vanish pardon i entreat you as dilettante i the curtain raise when i upon the blacksburg meet you i find it good for that is your proper place end of scene twenty one end of section
22-25 to 25 of Faust. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Faust, Part 1, by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Translated by Bayard Taylor. Scene 22. Walpurgis Night's Dream. Oberon and Titania's Golden Wedding. Intermezzo. Manager. Sons of Miding, rest to-day. Needless your machinery, misty vale and mountain grey. That is all the scenery. Herald. Let the wedding golden be, must fifty years be rounded, but the golden give to me when the strife's compounded. Oberon. Spirits, if you're here, be seen. Show yourselves delighted. Fairy king and fairy queen, they are newly blighted. Puck. Cometh Puck, and light of limb, whisks and whirls in measure. Come a hundred after him to share with him the pleasure. Ariel. Ariel's song is heavenly pure, his tones are sweet and rare ones. Though ugly faces he allure, yet he allures the fair ones. Oberon. Spouses who would fain agree, learn how we were mated. If your pairs would loving be, first be separated. Titania. If her wings do have control, and the man berate her, take him to the northern pole, and her to the equator. Orchestra Tutti, Fortissimo. Snout of fly, fly mosquito bill, bill and kin of all conditions, frog and grass and cricket trill, these are, are the musicians. Solo. See the bagpipe on our track, tis the soplon bubble. Hear the schnicky schnicky schnack, through his nostrils double. Spirit just growing into form. Spider's foot and paunch of toad and little wings we know em. A little creature twill not be, but yet a little poem. A little couple. Little step and lofty leap through honeydew and fragrance. You'll never mount the airy steep with all your tripping vagrants. Inquisitive traveller. Is but masquerading play, see I with precision. Oberon, the beauteous fay, meets to-night my vision. Orthodox. Not a claw, no tail I see, and yet, beyond a cavil, like the gods of Greece, must he also be a devil. Northern Artist. I only see with sketchy air some outlines of the tourney, yet I be times myself prepared for my Italian journey. Purist. My bad luck brings me here, alas! How roars the orgy louder! And of the witches in the mass, but only two wear powder. Young witch, huckster witch. Powder becomes, like petticoat, a gray and wrinkled naughty. So I sit naked on my goat, and show a strapping body. Matron. We've too much tact and policy to rate with jibes a scolder. Yet young and tender though you be, I hope to see you moulder. Leader of the band. Fly, snout, and mosquito bill, don't swarm so round the naked. Frog in grass and cricket trill, observe the time and make it. Weathercock, towards one side. Society to one's desire. Brides only and the sweetest, and bachelors of youth and fire, and prospects the completest towards the other side and if the earth don't open now to swallow up each ranter why then will i myself i vow jump into hell instanta zinis us as little insects see with sharpest snippers flitting that our papa satan we may honour as is fitting hennings how in crowds together massed they are jesting shameless they will even say at last that their hearts are blameless. Musagets. Among this witch's revelry is way one gladly loses, and truly it would easier be than to command the muses. Si devant, genius of the age. The proper folks one's talents laud, come on and none shall pass us. 
the Bloxburg has a summit broad like germany's parnassus inquisitive traveller say who's that stiff and pompous man he walks with haughty paces he snuffles all he snuffle can he scents the jesuits traces crane both clear and muddy streams for me are good to fish and sport in and thus the pious man you see with even devils consorting worldling yes for the pious i suspect all instruments are fitting and on the blocksburg they erect full many a place of meeting dancer a newer chorus now succeeds i hear the distant drumming don't be disturbed tis in the reeds the bittern's changeless booming dancing master how each his legs in nimble trip lifts up and makes a clearance the crooked jump the heavy skip nor care for the appearance good fellow the rabble by such height are held to maim and slay delights them as orpheus liar the brutes compelled the bagpipe here unites them dogmatist i'll not be led by any lure of doubts or critic cavils the devil must be something sure or how should there be devils idealist this once the fancy wrought in me is really too despotic forsooth if i am all i see i must be idiotic realist this racking fuss on every hand it gives me great vexation and for the first time here i stand on insecure foundation supernaturalist with much delight i see the play and grant to these their merits since from the devils i also may infer the better spirits skeptic the flame they follow on and on and think they're near the treasure but devil rhymes with doubt alone so i am here with pleasure leader of the band frog in green and cricket trill such dilettantes perdition fly snout and mosquito bill each one's a fine musician the adroit sans souci we call the clan of merry creatures so then go afoot no more if we can and on our heads we go then the awkward once many a bit we sponged but now god help us that is done with our shoes are all danced out we trow we've but naked souls to run with willow the wisps from the marshes we appear where we originated yet in the ranks at once we're here as glittering gallants rated shooting star darting hither from the sky in star and firelight shooting crosswise now in grass i lie who'll help me to my footing the heavy fellows room and round about us room trodden are the grasses spirits also spirits come and they are our bulky masses puck enter not so stool fed quite like elephant calves about one and the heaviest weight to-night be puck himself the stout one Ariel, if loving nature at your back or mind the wings uncloses follow up my airy track to the mount of roses orchestra pianissimo cloud and trailing mist or head are now illuminated air and leaves and wind in reed and all is dissipated scene twenty three dreary day a field in misery in despair long wretchedly astray on the face of the earth and now imprisoned that gracious ill-starred creature shut in a dungeon as a criminal and given up to fearful torments to this has it come to this treacherous contemptible spirit and thou hast concealed it from me stand then stand roll the devilish eyes wrathfully in thy head stand and defy me with thine intolerable presence imprisoned in irretrievable misery delivered up to evil spirits and to condemning unfeeling man and thou hast lulled me meanwhile with the most insipid dissipations 
hast concealed from me her increasing wretchedness, and suffered her to get hopelessly to ruin. She is not the first. Dog! Abominable monster! Transform him, thou infinite spirit! Transform the reptile again into his dog shape, in which it pleased him often at night to scamper before me, to roll himself at the feet of the unsuspecting wanderer, and hang upon his shoulders when he fell. Transform him again into his favorite likeness, that he may crawl upon his belly in the dust before me, that I may trample him, the outlawed underfoot. Not the first! Oh, woe! Woe which no human soul can grasp, that more than one being should sink into the depths of this misery, that the first, in its writhing death agony under the eyes of the eternal forgiver, did not expiate the guilt of all others. The misery of this single one pierces to the very marrow of my life, and thou art calmly grinning at the fate of thousands. Now. We are already again at the end of our wits, where the understanding of you men runs wild. Why didst thou enter into fellowship with us, if thou canst not carry it out? Wilt fly, and art not secure against dizziness? Did we trust ourselves upon thee, or thou thyself upon us? Gnash not thus thy devouring teeth at me, it fills me with horrible disgust. Mighty, glorious spirit, who hast vouchsafed to me thine apparition, who knowest my heart and my soul, why fetter me to the felon comrade who feeds on mischief and gluts himself with ruin? Hast thou done? Rescue her, or woe to thee. The fearfullest curse be upon thee for thousands of ages. I cannot loosen the bonds of the avenger, nor undo his balls. Rescue her! Who was it that plunged her into ruin? I or thou? Faust looks around wildly. Wilt thou grasp the thunder? Well, that it has not been given to you, miserable mortals, to crush to pieces the innocent respondent. That is the tyrant fashion of relieving oneself in embarrassment. Take me thither, she shall be free. And the danger to which thou wilt expose thyself. Know that the guilt of blood from thy hand still lies upon the town. Avenging spirits hover over the spot where the victim fell, and lie in wait for the returning murderer. That too from thee? Murder and death of a world upon thee, monster. Take me thither, I say, and liberate her. I will convey thee there, and hear what I can do. Have I all the power in heaven and on earth? I will becloud the jailer's senses, get possession of the key, and lead her forth with human hand. I will keep watch. The magic steeds are ready. I will carry you off. So much is in my power. Up and away! Scene 24 Night, open field. Faust and Mephistopheles speeding onward on black horses. What weave they there round the raven stone? I know not what they are brewing and doing. Soaring up, sweeping down, bowing and bending. A witch's guild. They scatter, devote, and doom. On, on. Scene 25. Dungeon. Faust with a bunch of keys and a lamp before an iron door. A shudder, long unfelt, comes o'er me. Mankind's collected woe o'erwhelms me here. She dwells within the dark, damp walls before me, and all her crime was a delusion, dear. What? I delay to free her? I dread once again to see her? On! My shrinking but lingers death more near. 
He grasps the lock. The sound of singing is heard inside. Margaret singing. My mother the harlot Who put me to death My father the violet Who eaten me hath Little sister so good Laid my bones in the wood In the damp moss and clay Then was I a beautiful bird of the wood Fly away, fly away. Faust unlocking. She does not dream her lover listens near, That he the rattling chain, the rustling straw can hear. He enters, hiding herself on the pallet. Woe, woe, they come, O oh, death of bitterness. Whispering. Hush, hush. The hour is come that frees thee. Throwing herself before him. Art thou a man, then pity my distress. Thy cries will wake the guards, and they will seize thee. He takes hold of the fetters to unlock them. On her knees. Who, headsman, unto thee such power over me could give? Thou art come for me at midnight hour. Have mercy on me. Let me live. Is not soon enough when morning chime has run? She rises. And yet I am so young, so young, And now death comes, and ruin. I too was fair, and that was my undoing. My love was near, but now he's far. Torn lies the wreath, scattered the blossoms are. Seize me not thus so violently. Spare me. What have I done to thee? Let me not vainly entreat thee. I never chanced in all my days to meet thee. Shall I outlive this misery? Now am I wholly in thy might. But let me suckle, first, my baby. I blissed it all this livelong night. They took to away, to vex me, maybe. And now they say I killed the child outright, and never shall I be glad again. They sing songs about me. "'Tis bad of the folk to do it. "'There's an old story has the same refrain. "'Who bade them so construe it?' "'Falling upon his knees. "'Here lieth one who loves thee ever, "'the thraldom of thy woe to sever.' "'Flinging herself beside him. "'O oh, let us kneel and call the saints to hide us, "'under the steps beside us, "'the threshold under, hell heaves in thunder, "'the evil one with terrible wrath, Seeketh a path, his prey to discover. Aloud. Margaret, Margaret. Attentively listening. That was the voice of my lover. She springs to her feet, the fetters fall off. Where is he? I heard him call me. I am free, no one shall enthrall me. To his neck will I fly, on his bosom lie. On the threshold he stood, and Margaret calling. Midst of hell's howling and noises appalling, Midst of the wrathful, infernal derision, I knew the sweet sound of the voice of the vision. Tis I. Tis thou. Oh, say it once again. Clasping him. Tis he, tis he. Where now is all my pain? The anguish of the dungeon and the chain. Tis thou, thou comest to save me. And I am saved. Again the street I see. Where first I looked on thee, And the garden, brightly blooming, Where I and Martha wait thy coming. Struggling to leave. Come, come with me. Delay now, so fain I stay, When thou delayest. Caressing him. Away now, if longer here thou stayest, We shall be made to dearly rue it. Kiss me, canst no longer do it. My friend, so short a time thou art missing, And hast unlearned thy kissing. Why is my heart so anxious on thy breast, Where once a heaven thy glances did create me, A heaven thy loving words expressed, And thou didst kiss as thou wouldst suffocate me? Kiss me, or I'll kiss thee. She embraces him. Ah, oh, woe! Thy lips are chill and still. How changed in fashion thy passion! 
Who has done me this ill? She turns away from him. Come, follow me, my darling, be more bold. I'll clasp thee soon with warmth a thousandfold, but follow now, tis all I beg of thee. Turning to him. And is it thou? Thou, surely, certainly. Tis I, come on. Thou wilt unloose my chain, and in thy lap wilt thou take me once again. How comes it that thou dost not shrink from me? Say, dost thou know, my friend, whom thou makest free? Come, come, the night already vanisheth. My mother have I put to death, I have drowned the baby born to thee. Was it not given to thee and me? Thee too, tis thou, it scarcely true doth seem. Give me thy hand, tis not a dream, thy dear, dear hand. But, ah, uh, tis wet. Why, wipe it off, methinks that yet there's blood thereon. Ah, oh God, what hast thou done? Nay, sheathe thy sword at last, do not affray me. Oh, let the past be past, thy words will slay me. No, no, thou must outlive us. Now I'll tell thee the graves to give us. Thou must begin to-morrow, the work of sorrow, the best place give my mother then close at her side my brother, and me a little away, but not too very far, I pray, and here, on my right breast, my baby lay. Nobody else will lie beside me. Ah, within thine arms to hide me, that was a sweet and gracious bliss. But no more, no more can I attain it. I would force myself on thee and constrain it, and it seems thou repellest my kiss. And yet tis thou, so good, so kind to see. If thou feel'st it is I, then come with me. Out yonder. To freedom. If the grave is there, death lying in wait, then come. From here to eternal rest, no further step. No, no, thou goest away. O oh, Henry, if I could go. Thou canst, just will it. Open stands the door. I dare not go. There's no hope any more. Why should I fly? They'll still my steps waylay. It is so wretched, forced to beg my living, And a bad conscience sharper misery giving. It is so wretched, to be strange, forsaken, And I'd still be followed and taken. I'll stay with thee. Be quick, be quick. Save thy perishing child. Away. Follow the ridge. Up by the brook. Over the bridge. Into the wood. To the left, where the plank is placed. In the pool. Seize it in haste. Tis trying to rise. Tis struggling still. Save it. Save it. Recall thy wandering will. One step and thou art free at last. If the mountain we had only passed... There sits my mother upon a stone. I feel an icy shiver. There sits my mother upon a stone, And her head is wagging ever. She beckons. She nods not. Her heavy head falls o'er. She slept so long that she wakes no more. She slept while we were caressing. Ah, those were the days of blessing. Here words and prayers are nothing worth. I'll venture, then, to bear thee forth. No, let me go. I'll suffer no force. Grasp me not so murderously. I've done else, all things for the love of thee. The day dawns. Dearest, dearest. Day? Yes, the day comes. The last day breaks for me. My wedding day it was to be. Tell no one thou hast been with Margaret. Woe for my garland. The chances are over, tis all in vain. We shall meet once again, but not at the dances. The crowd is thronging, no word is spoken. The square below and the streets overflow. The death bell tolls, the wand is broken. I am seized and bound and delivered, shoved to the block. They give the sign. 
Now over each neck has quivered The blade that is quivering over mine. Dumb lies the world, like the grave. Oh, had I ne'er been born! Appears outside. Off, or you are lost, dear morn. Useless talking, delaying, and praying. My horses are nighing. The morning twilight is near. What rises up from the threshold here? He, he, suffer him not. What does he want in this holy spot? He seeks me. Thou shalt live. Judgment of God, myself to thee I give. To Faust. Come, or I will leave I the large and thee. Thine am I, father. Rescue me. Ye angels, holy cohorts, guard me. Camp around and from evil ward me. Henry, I shudder to think of thee. She is judged. From above. She is saved. To Faust. Hida to me. He disappears with Faust. From within, dying away. Henry! Henry! End of scene 25. End of Faust, part 1, by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Translated by Bayard Taylor.